So in the last episode, we took a look at how we could add some nice lights into our scene here to create a bit more of a dynamic piece. Now today, I'm going to go ahead and show you how we can add in a camera, frame everything up nicely, play around with our color management settings a little bit before we render this out. But as always, my name is Keelan and let's get into it. All right, welcome back everybody. So in the last episode, we were here looking at some lighting and in the end, I ended up with something a little bit like this. I think it's quite minimal, but nice, does the job. And you might notice that now I have a little bit of a base here. All I've done for this is added in a subdivided cube and a basic torus primitive shape, just so that when we come to frame this up, we don't have a floating head sort of effect. So I'm gonna leave this as a bit of a challenge for you to go ahead and add that in. Hopefully that shouldn't be too difficult for you if you've made it this far so far, <laughs> creating the head. But now what I wanna do is I'm gonna jump back into my solid view here so we can go ahead and look at how we can add the camera to start rendering our piece. So in order to go ahead and add a camera into our scene, we can do it just like any other object by going into add. And down here, we've got this nice camera option. Now it's gonna be added to the center of our world here, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you my preferred method to get this nicely centered up here. And a camera initially is just like any other object, so we can use G to move it around, and then R to rotate, to sort of move it into place. But this can be a little bit cumbersome to try and find the general placement. So what I prefer to do with this is to jump into front view. And you can either do this with the tilde key, as I demonstrated in some of the earlier videos, or you've got your gizmos up here to jump straight into front view here. So what I like to do is in front view now, if we go to view, we can go to align view and align the active camera to the view. And what that's gonna do is snap that camera to try and align itself with your current viewport view. And that way then we've got a little bit of an easier time trying to get this lined up. And in order then to jump into camera view, you can either use this button up here to see what the camera is looking at or till the key view camera. And at this point, if I go into the object properties on my camera, it looks pretty central, but we can make sure it is exactly centered in our world by adjusting our X location here. In this case, I'm just gonna round this out to zero. That way it is perfectly centered and we know this is gonna look nice and central. Now, as far as the Y and Z axis goes, this is gonna be down to preference, but we are gonna tinker with the camera settings just a little bit. So we'll come back to this in just a moment. But for now, let's go ahead and click on our camera and see what sort of options we have in here. Now there's quite a lot to go over. I won't jump into too much now, but the main thing I tend to play around with is the focal length. From what I've played around with in Blender, I find the higher my millimeter or the focal length, the sort of flatter my piece tends to appear and it, uh, it kind of gives it a bit of an orthographic look. So if we switch into orthographic, what's going on here is that it's giving you a flat appearance and you're not getting any perspective in your piece. But my preference is perspective with a reasonably high focal length of something around 90. But at this point, you can see it is pushing the camera in a fair bit. So we do need to now jump back into the data properties. I'm just going to pull back my Y axis to something like this and then perhaps increase my Z till we get our character sitting in the scene quite nicely. And we can also adjust the X rotation here if we want, along with the Z axis to get him looking a bit more straight on. But I think something like that will do for me. And at this point, the only thing I want to do is set up a backdrop before we go ahead and look at some color management options. And in terms of adding a backdrop, all I tend to do is to do shift A, we're going to add in a plane, and then I'm going to scale this up quite significantly, our X 90 degrees to rotate it on the X axis 90 degrees, pull it back here, and then back in our camera view to see the general alignment. So let's bring this up, something like that. And now when it comes to rendering, we will have a nice backdrop. And if you want, you can of course go ahead and add some color to this, making sure that we are in material preview to actually see the colors. And perhaps I'll go for like a nice sky blue, something like that. Cool, that's looking pretty snazzy. So now what I wanna do is to jump into rendered view to take a look at some of my preferred render settings and color management options. 
So let's go ahead and click up here to jump into rendered view. And as you can see, I am currently rendered in cycles. But before we go ahead and talk about general color management options, I do want to jump into EV. For those of you that are perhaps uh, limited to EV by different circumstances, or perhaps EV is just your preference. But as far as the settings here go, generally, I just like a bit of ambient occlusion. Um, some screen space reflections and you can use a little bit of bloom if you want adjusting your threshold to get a little bit of a glow effect going on but this is one of those scenarios where depending on your lighting setup and your general piece you're going to have to experiment just to see what generally works for you but for my case I'm going to be jumping into cycles here and those settings we tinkered with there are unique to Eevee so cycles is going to be a little bit different in this case I'm just going to go straight down to color management and what we can also do here to help optimize our scene a little bit more as we're going along is if we use Control B, we can click drag and highlight just the camera section here. And that way we are limiting the render region so that it's a little bit faster. So in this case, down in color management, there's a couple of options, but you know, you're gonna have to experiment and play around with these to find something that you generally like yourself. But in terms of my personal preference, I like a general filmic transform and the look i generally go for like a medium high contrast these days but you know high contrast is always nice too it just makes your colors look a little bit more crisp and vibrant i'm just going to keep mine on medium high and then i also like to use curves and what this is going to let us do is adjust our general lighting values or color values so i generally put a little marker in here to keep those mid-tones then we can put one down here drag it down slightly to deepen those shadows only slightly because I find, you know, you can go very easily go too much with this and then a little bit up here to increase the brightness of our highlights. And that is generally all I tend to do in regard to color management options. But even those little settings alone can make such a big impact. Now, in regards to my sampling, once again, this is going to vary based on how fast your computer is and your general scene. But Blender by default gives you a max samples of 4000. Personally, for me, this is a little bit too much. So I tend to aim for 500. And then you can also bring down your viewport preview as well if you want while you're looking at this. But 500 should do just fine. And then you've got your denoising options, which once again is going to vary based on what sort of hardware you have in your computer. But generally, you've got your default setup here, which Blender comes built in with. In my case, I'm using a RTX processor, uh, graphics card, sorry. So I can use optics using the albedo and normal passes, which is going to give me a little bit of a quicker result. But enough of my rambling, because at this point in time, we are ready to go ahead and render this out. In this case, you can either press F12, or if you come into render, click render image, and I'll see you when this is done. And here we have our finished character render. And if you wanna go ahead and save this out then, on this screen, we can go ahead up here, go to image, save as, and then save that wherever you want. But that unfortunately brings us to the end of this tutorial series. But nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned a lot along the way. And if you'd be interested in more of this type of content in the future, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and leave a like because it always goes a long way to support this channel. The source files for these tutorials will be on the Patreon as always. Other than that, I hope you enjoy the rest of your your day and I'll catch you in the next one.